Well, God bless you. Thank you for tuning in and welcome to today's show. This week, I'm going to be doing a continuation of activating your dream life to hear from God. And I want to begin by asking a very common question that people ask me as it relates to dreams. They ask, why is it difficult to remember certain dreams when you wake up? Now, the answer to that question is actually written directly in the word of God, and it comes directly from Jesus. In the book of Matthew, the 13th chapter and verse 19, Jesus says, When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. Now, this is Jesus saying that whenever the word of the kingdom and understand that the word of the kingdom can come as a form of revelation or as a vision or as a message, whenever a person hears it and they don't understand it, then Jesus says the wicked one comes and he catch it, that word or he takes it away. So this is what's happening when you can't recall your dreams and to give you a perfect example directly from the word of God I would take you to the book of Daniel the second chapter and in the second chapter of the book of Daniel Nebuchadnezzar has a dream and he doesn't understand the dream and immediately when he wakes up he cannot recall the dream this is confirmation of what Jesus is saying, that when the kingdom gives you a word and you don't understand it, then the enemy comes to snatch that word away from you. And you have to understand that in Nebuchadnezzar's case, Satan did not want him to know the interpretation of that dream. You have to also understand that Satan comes to take away the word or the revelation that is given to you by God through dreams and visions. You see, just as you are busy trying to activate your dream life to, so that you can hear from God, Satan is busy trying to deactivate your dream life so you won't hear from God. So you have to recognize the tactics that the enemy is using to prevent you from hearing from God. But why does this happen? Why would the enemy do this? Because there are secrets that the enemy doesn't want you to know. There are secrets that the enemy doesn't want you to know. Now, understand in Nebuchadnezzar's case, and I'm using the word of God as a reference here, that in Nebuchadnezzar's case, he did not understand his dream and he could not recall it. And so what he did was he called for the sorcerers and the astrologers and all the wise men of his kingdom to interpret the dream, but they could not interpret it because he could not remember the dream. And because of that, he put out a decree that all the men, the wise men of the land would be killed if they could not reveal to him the meaning of that dream. And this was going to be a death sentence on the life of the prophet Daniel. So the enemy most definitely did not want Nebuchadnezzar to know the meaning of this dream because it would have brought death to the prophet Daniel. So there are many times that God gives you dreams and visions that you can't recall and it is because the enemy has done things to steal the word of God from you. Now, rest assured that if you cannot remember a dream, it is a strong possibility that the enemy doesn't want you to remember it because the enemy doesn't waste his time stealing things that are not valuable. Now, now you think about that. Thieves don't put together plans to go steal stuff that's free. Thieves don't put together plans to go steal things that have absolutely no valuable content in it. If the devil is trying to steal something from you, it is because it is valuable. If the devil is trying to steal a dream or a word or a revelation or a vision from you, it is because it is valuable. 
Well, how do you prevent this from happening or how do you deal with this? Well, the first thing you need to do is exactly what Daniel did, which was prayed. You need to develop a morning devotion when you wake up. You need to start doing praise and worship when you wake up. And the reason for that, you probably can recall there have been times when you have had dreams and you could not remember them. Then later on, sometimes something caused you to recall that dream. And what may have happened is you may have heard a prayer or you may have heard a scripture or a word of God. And that power in that word of God caused the enemy that had captured what was yours to release it. And it came back to you. But when you begin to pray and have a daily routine of prayer or maybe just sing a song, it will cause the enemy that has come to capture that word to release that word. And, it, and you will begin to recall those dreams while you're in your morning devotion. And many times it happens to me when I'm singing or in reading the word of God, things that were almost that, things that were taken from me in my sleep. They come back to me while I'm in prayer or why I'm singer or worshiping God. And so you have to develop a morning devotion prayer. And I would also say that you need to pray before you go to bed and you need to pray when you wake up. But when you go to bed, you need to be very specific in your prayers. And the reason for that is, is when you're specific in your prayers, you understand what you're looking for answers about. One of the most powerful prayers that I have ever prayed is, Lord, reveal to me secrets that the enemy doesn't want me to know. Did you hear that? Lord, reveal unto me secrets that the enemy doesn't want me to know. You know, you can have problems in your marriage. And one of the ways to pray about it is to get God to show you the root of that is to pray and ask God to show you secrets about the problems in your marriage that the devil doesn't want you to know. You see, there are secrets that the devil doesn't want you to know about that marriage problem. And when you're praying, you're praying that God would reveal that secret to you. And you pray that God would reveal the root of that problem to you. And I want to share this with you because you're being specific in prayer. You're looking for a specific answer. And normally God will show it to you in a dream and a vision. I recall years ago um, counseling a young lady and, and she told me about a dream she had had when she was married for the first time. And she said she had a dream where she was in the bed and her husband was in the bed. And there was this big black snake laying right in between them in the bed. And she said that dream troubled her and I explained to her that there was a point in your marriage that there was a person that came in between you and your husband and whoever this person was was very black in complexion and she immediately confirmed that the marriage deteriorated because of some uh, issues between her and a relative of her spouse and that individual was dark in complexion so sometimes God will show you those things in advance and you just simply have to know how to interpret them or at least pray that God will reveal the secret to you and when God reveals the secret to you my advice to you is don't really tell anybody and the reason I said don't tell anybody is because once you reveal the secret to someone else, the enemy will start strategizing against you because the enemy doesn't know you have the secret until you reveal the secret to the enemy. So when the Lord shows you the root of the problem in the marriage or the Lord shows you the root of the problem of whatever it is, whether it's ministry or whatever it may be, you keep the secret and you continue to pray until you get to the root of of the problem. When you get to the root of the problem, then you speak to the roots of the problem like Jesus spoke to the fig tree that didn't have any figs on it. And he commanded the fig tree to wither and die. You see, when you're being specific in prayer and you're speaking to the root of the problem, when God identifies the root of the problem, it makes it easier for you to command the very roots of the problem to die.
So that's why you're praying to be specific that God will speak to you in the dream, show you the problem, then the root of the problem. Now you can go directly to the root of the problem in God. And when you get the root of the problem you get the revelation keep praying morning noon night midnight keep praying until the root of that problem dies and one of the way you will know that that problem has been dealt with in the spirit is you will receive another vision or a dream as a confirmation that that very thing has died or it has been dealt with or it has been resolved and that's how you continue to pray until you receive the answer. And I know some will say, well, you shouldn't pray over and over and over. I can't go into the, to, to that today, but I disagree. You pray through a problem instead of praying about a problem. You pray until the problem is over, not until you fit, feel that you've expressed your point of view. You pray through the problem. Not just pray about the problem and be very specific about the problem and understand that the reason you're doing this is because you're trying to get God to speak to you, to open up your revelation knowledge to you, that he would reveal to you secrets that the enemy doesn't want you to know. Now, real quickly, one of the things I want to do is I want to reveal something to you that you need to be cautious of. One of the secrets that the enemy doesn't want you to know is you should not take instructions in your dreams from dead relatives. When you start seeing dead people in your dreams trying to give you instructions, no, 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 no. You're, listen, your relatives are either, if they're dead, loved one, they're either in heaven or they're in hell. And if they're in heaven, they're too busy to be worried about your problems. They're enjoying themselves. If they're in hell, they're not going to get a time out to come give you a message. The Bible tells us about that Lazarus as well as the rich man that died in hell who wanted a time out to come and tell his relatives what was going on. But he was not granted that. The these are familiar spirits pretending to be your relatives or pretending to be loved ones that you know and you should disregard when you see dead people trying to give you instructions in your dreams. Now, that's another subject for another day, but this whole point of this message that I'm preaching today is to share with you how to keep your dream life active and even if you don't dream at all then you most definitely need to tune in next week as i'm going to be dealing with that on next week so that's all the time that i have for this week and i want to pray now that the word of the lord will settle in your spirit father god i thank you in the name of jesus for your word and i thank you for the people that are listening i pray now god that you would encourage them and strengthen them that they would understand how to keep their dream life activated to hear from you, God. Let the Holy Spirit guide them and let your word keep them. And we forever give your name the praise and the glory in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Well, beloved, that's all the time I have for this week. God bless you and continue to have a wonderful week.